outcome perspective of how everybody's going to look at this game switched this in the matter Max of McGee a minute, a minute and a half exchange I'm Craig Helsley, whatever happened referee. during pregame. This is Manu Press, your umpire. I mean, we're kind of seeing it he out there at the, the coin CIS. toss right now. As Omaha, the two teams are kind of team. back the and forth. Logo, logo's but ahead. We talked about it, Devin. The football's a tail. Yeah, this is only What's week two. Heads but you know a lot of these logo. players force the line in the back of their mind going. It is a head. You won the toss. You yeah. lost at Omaha last year. We did them again in which revenge. Way you kick? At home at the Tony's Pizza Event Center for Champions Omaha's Bowl. Won the toss. And it comes down Lexington to the last play the for Salina half. for the second Salina year in a row. We'll receive. And they Shake come up short. Men. This have game, game, as Serrano Neal told me, could have something to do as this season goes along about home field advantage. If you come through and it's a close schedule at the end, whoever wins this game could get home field advantage. This could be the leg up. That was the only reason he was really thinking about this game being a component of what happens later on in the season. And I get it. I mean, you always want to go undefeated. Last year, the Liberty started out 8-0. But this game really doesn't mean that much. If you come out of here with a win or loss, it doesn't matter. I mean, we, look at what the Liberty did to Omaha last year in the regular season. I mean, they dominated them. They made them look like a second-rate franchise. But then Omaha comes out in the championship game, and they happen to squeak out a win when it matters. So regular season games, do they matter that much? No, but do they? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> they kind of do. How's that for a weird answer? You're exactly right, Devin. But I think with what happened 45 minutes to an hour ago in yeah. pregame, I think your mind shifts a little bit. I know it did in mine. You know, talking to Brian and talking to you, yeah, it's just this, it's week two. You want to get better from week one to week two. We saw that last week with Topeka. We know they got better from week one to week two. And you want to get better, but in the back of your mind, you got what happened an hour ago sitting there going, we have to come out, we need to win this game. Omaha will start out, they will kick this football away. And they will do so with Jeremy Reynolds, their kicker, longtime kicker here with the Omaha Beef. As you hear the cowboy, cowbells ringing from the Omaha fans that roll in about 22, 25 deep, setting to our left here at the press of the press box at Tony's Pizza Event Center. Riddles will put it in the air. It's a low line drive squib kick. That'll go back to Trey Griffin at the goal line. Griffin mishandles it. Now he scoops it up, evades a tackler, goes to the 5, 10, 15, and brought down at the 16 yard line. That is where the Salina Liberty offense will come out and start their first drive of the night. Tyree Adams will be the engineer. He's the Liberty quarterback. Tyree, two passing touchdowns, one rushing touchdown a week ago in Topeka. He will have at his disposal Tracy Brooks, who had a rushing touchdown. Also, Trey Griffin, who had three rushing touchdowns in the first half against the Topeka Tropics one week ago. Yeah, and just a duo that every coach wants every time they come on the field is having both of those guys that are elusive. Starts out empty backfield. Brooks split out to the right-hand side. Three wide receivers opposite him to the left. Here's a big block and a big play by the Liberty. They go across midfield. The ball comes the out. Omaha's claiming the that they have it. The ball as that ball out. goes to first Fast Ed Smith, he takes it across the midfield stripe, and it's a first down for the Liberty. Yeah, and Isaiah Scott right there at wide receiver picking up a huge block to free him to get up the sideline for a first down. To the 24-yard line already in Omaha territory after one play. And we are off and running here in Salina. Glad you could join us if you're listening on KINA or also streaming audio on SalinaPost.com. You'll maybe may also watching video if it's working right now on the CIF app. To the right-hand side, three wide receivers. And it's going to be a run straight up the gut. Tracy Brooks, and he will take it for five. Talk about the composure, the body composure of Tracy Brooks and what he's done over the last two years. He is not a stranger to the weight room. Yeah, and he just seems to get bigger and bigger in the right ways every year. We see him come in at the beginning of training camp, and he runs with a purpose. He is sniffing out that first contact he can get out of the way. Second down and five at the 19-yard line. Salina working their way into Omaha territory. Brooks on the right hip of Tyree Adams. Two receivers in motion, one on each side. Play action fake. Adams looking. Now he's dancing. Gets out of trouble. Scrambles to the right-hand side. Evades another tackler. Looking for that first down. Tyree with a little shake and bake, and he's going to go down right at the sticks. And the referee had a collision against the wall with one of the Liberty massive offensive linemen, Brian. As you look down the wall, that was not a good collision for the official on that far side as the Liberty offensive lineman had a collision with one of our referees. Yeah, we're going to have a uh, little bit of a timeout right now. 
basically nowhere to go. And that's got to be the worst feeling in the world to see some of these guys, and, and especially with the increased size of some of these guys this season. And, uh, you know, the official just kind of ran out of space and nowhere to go, kind of working on that left ankle a little bit. Training staff for Salina out there. Steven, these guys, they'll, they'll tough it out. He'll make yeah. the best of it. Good round of applause from the crowd. Steven Fluker was the Liberty offensive lineman that had the collision with the referee over there against that far barrier. He is six foot six, 340 pounds. That official is not. <laughs> You're exactly right. Liberty did get the first down on the Tyree Adams run. They are now at the Omaha 14 yard line. First down and 10. Three receivers, left-hand side, run to Tracy Brooks on that side. Tracy will take it, barrel roll over a couple of tacklers inside the 10 to the 9, and the Liberty chunk off another five yards. Yeah, and that's three plays now, and you're averaging almost 10 yards a play. So if you're Haran O'Neal, you've got to be doing great as we see. I don't know if that's Tracy Brooks running off the sideline. Yeah, it looks like Tracy's got a little bit of stinger. It looks Honestly, it looks like his left wrist isn't quite hanging the way it should be. And uh, Trey Dudley Giles, former Liberty player, is the guy on both of Tracy's runs that has come out of that backfield to make the stop. So he's kind of keen on that backfield for the beef. So Trey Griffin will be called upon here to probably do more than Before what he planned on game. doing this early time in the out. game. But we don't know. Salina. I think Haran O'Neill planned on First playing both these running backs the in the timeout by Haran O'Neill to get everybody organized. Run. It'll be a second down and five. 12.06 left to go here first quarter. We have an early timeout. We'll take it. Here's a 30-second timeout as you listen to Liberty Football on KINA. Out of the timeout, second down and five. Tracy Brooks out of the game. They're going to play an end around to Fast Ed Smith. He juked a defender, dives to the five, and he's going to be just short of first down yardage. Ed on the last second dive got probably two more yards than what he should have and brings up now a third down and half a yard. Yeah, he should have had no yards as they Omaha read that really well on that end around there. And just a great job by Fast Ed Smith to get it to make it a third and manageable. Liberty third and a half a yard at the five yard line. Tyree Adams has a stack of receivers on the right. He's going to hand it off to Trey Griffin. Griffin is going to be stacked up at the line of scrimmage for no gain. He does not have the first down as they are going to spot him right at the five yard line and it will be fourth down and a half a yard. Yeah, and Coach O'Neill didn't even look to the sideline as Michael Persley had the gate open ready to run out. And Ron O'Neill did not even turn around to acknowledge the special team, said we're going to get this one yard. So fourth down, it may even be less than a half a yard. I mean, it's like fourth down and a foot. Liberty stacking everybody to the right-hand side, including Trey Griffin. They're going to hand it off to Trey. Cuts it back, does a little dance, and maybe looking for the end zone, and he's going to be brought down just short of the goal line. First down and goal at the one-yard line for the Salina Liberty, and the former Blue Dragon from Hutch Community College picks up a big first down. And not many teams like that can see a guy like Tracy Brooks as such a dominating running back in this league go out with injury, and you bring in a guy like Trey Griffin who had three rushing touchdowns in the first half last week. Griffin remains in the backfield, right hip of Tyree Adams. Three receivers all on that side. Now Tyree's going to duck under center. Quarterback sneak. Tyree's going to be stuffed at the line of scrimmage. A flag is going to fly from the far side, and we'll see what this is going to be as we unpack everybody. But very rarely do you see a quarterback under center for the Salina Liberty, and that's what Tyree Adams did there. Now we got to check and see what the penalty may be. And I don't know, usually on a, on a time like this, you see illegal defense, but it's when you're down inside the red zone at the one-yard line. Illegal defense. And that's exactly what it is, it's illegal defense. Right, it's one of those magical penalties, right? If it's on the defense, it's six goal. inches. If it's on the offense, First it's five down. yards. Yeah, and, and you know, Russ hit it on the head. I think what got Omaha off track there was when we went under center. 
Now suddenly your first reaction is, hey, I got to jam that box a little bit, and that's what created the illegal defense. First down, and even shorter now for the Liberty. Three receivers, right-hand side, pitch out, Trey Griffin. Griffin's going to be caught from behind and taken down for no gain. Excellent play on that defensive stand by Dennis Riggs. Yeah, just a great job there by the Omaha defense to hold him to no gain here. And I think Heron O'Neill kind of showing his cards early as we're going for it on fourth and a foot, and we're going to get four plays here from the one-yard line to try to put it in the end zone. Ball setting on the one, second down and goal. 9.45 left to play here first quarter. We're still on the opening drive. Liberty with the football, knocking on the door. Tyree Adams sends two in motion on the left-hand side, and we have an illegal procedure here on the Left-hand side of the Liberty offensive line, it looks like. We'll let them make the official call. Oh, and it will be procedure against the Liberty. Offense. So that'll back them up Five from yard the penalty. one to the six. Second down. And again, exchanging penalties. But when you have more work room to back up, you're going to go further back. Yeah, and maybe open the playbook here a little bit. You're not stuck on that one, one yard, six inch yard line to get in. Maybe, maybe now you can do a fake run up the middle and a wide receiver out on the flats. You know, Coach Ron O'Neill is just a, a man of many mysteries. 9.20 left to play, first quarter. Still scoreless here, Liberty on their opening drive. They're going to split the receivers this time, empty backfield. They'll go two by two, and another flag is going to fly. Before the delay game, timeout, Salina. As we will have another Second timeout for the Liberty. The half. 30 seconds. So immediately Lane. here on the first drive, Brian, they have taken two of their three timeouts. Yeah, they've taken two timeouts, but I think they're good timeouts from the standpoint. You don't want to be in this position, this close to the goal line, and make a mistake. Better to take that timeout early on this very first drive. Get things right. You want to get that advantage. Get up on the scoreboard first, if at all possible. I want to go back to one of those uh, runs by by Trey he went over it was the defensive line slid so much over our offensive line came over Trey basically ran in the back of one of his linemen that hole just didn't open up so from the six now a little bit more room to score right you have an end around fake to Trey Griffin now Tyree Adams scrambling he backpedals now he's going to set on the accelerator and he's going to go all the way to the end zone the second rushing touchdown of the year for Tyree Adams as he backpedaled to avoid a would-be tackler at the ankles, and Houdini pulls it again. Houdini into the end zone. He backpedaled to the 10, then saw an opening. He smashed the accelerator on the floor, and he was able to score. And very quickly, Coach O'Neill puts the sign up. We're going to go for two. Yeah, there was no hesitation there, Brian. Great spotting there. Is now they're going to reset the play clock, but he, there was no hesitation by Heron O'Neill there, Devin, that he wanted to go for two. Getting a new kicker in the building tonight for the Liberty. I don't know that this has anything to do with him. Liberty going for two here. Two guys in motion, right-hand side. Adams wants to throw, and it's going to be intercepted by Omaha, and they are going to be turned away. 8-19 left to play. Six to nothing. Liberty scoring on a Tyree Adams six-yard run. Immediate timeout. Back with more Liberty football Media. after this 90-second break timeout. here on KINA. You can bid on trips, spa days, local services, original art, and certificates to your favorite stores and restaurants from the comfort of your car, couch, or kids' activities. Proceeds of the auction help keep Salina kids safe, healthy, and strong. The auction is sponsored by Sage Oak Wealth Partners. Don't delay. Register today at capsofsalina.org. The CAPS 33rd Annual Benefit Auction, online, April 1st through 3rd. Show Construction does metal roofs. Show Construction offers residential, commercial, and ag metal roofing. Show offers designer ribbed steel, standing seam, screw down panels, or stone coated steel. Show Construction has financing available with low monthly payments. When it's time for a new metal roof, remember Sh Show Construction. We'll travel to you and provide free estimates. Call 833-2007. That's 833-2007. Google us, showroofing.com, or find us on Facebook. Show Construction, the company your neighbors trust. It's spring cleaning time, and that means you should add one more little thing to your to-do list. Call Comfort Heating and Air for an HVAC cleaning check. Our technicians will make sure your system is in tip-top shape, so when warm weather arrives, your AC will be ready. That means cleaning your coils, checking freon levels, double-checking all electrical connections for safety, even changing your filters. With locations in Salina and Clay Center, we are the company that cares. Comfort, heating, and air. You can rely on the company that cares. We're comfort. Heating, and air. Good job, 
Back here at Tony's Pizza Event Center, the Liberty lead six to nothing after a six yard touchdown run by Tyree Adams. For Tyree, it is his second rushing touchdown of the year. He also has two passing touchdowns, and now the Liberty will get ready to kick it away to Omaha. Michael Persley will be the kicker for Omaha, excuse me, for Salina tonight. Persley has been in and out of the building, not only as a kicker for Salina back previous years before Jimmy Allen. This is Jimmy Allen's fourth season here already. Persley was here before that, and also in here as soon as last year with the Wichita Force. Persley has it teed up. The former Kansas Wesleyan Coyote will kick it away. It's a low line drive squib kick that will get by a couple of defenders and go up against the wall at the 15 yard line. Free kick. Brian Burner hits the wall. Sometimes without ball a return, place one it's the best thing you can First do down. in this indoor Omaha. football game. Yeah, exactly right. You're going to push the team back. Now that ball's going to be placed where it hit the wall. The only downside of that, the angle that uh, Michael took. Had he kind of swung it over just a little bit more, kind of push it back maybe inside the, uh, you know, 15 towards the 10. But all in all, great place for the uh, Liberty defense to start out. Omaha, let's see what they've got now. The beef will start out at their own 16-yard line. Andrew Jackson back in there at quarterback. We thought initially that he was still going to be out for this game. We understand he broke a bone in his foot, but that may or may not be true as Jackson is out there now here against the Liberty. They're going to hand it off here, and it's a run to the left-hand side for the beef. Deshaun Jones will get about three yards on the play. That'll bring up second down and seven. Yeah, and Keenan Gibbs is one to watch. He kind of highlighted last week as Omaha quickly here going no huddle. Jackson has a high snap. He barely gets off the ground to get it in, and now he's going to have a long pass that's going to be dropped in for a touchdown. A touchdown and a personal foul will be called here against Dontre Matthews as the pass was caught by Tyler Jones, a former Liberty player, and we'll probably say that all night long as Omaha is notorious for robbing some of the players or at least taking some of the players that Salina didn't want. Or maybe they moved on for other reasons. After the we don't touchdown, know all that. We're just personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number four on the, the defense. Hit, by that 15 yard penalty Jones put in the bank the on the first line. play after the kickoff. It's going to be added later in the day. And that was something we saw last week, Devin, early in the game against Topeka. The secondary really, I mean, for lack of better terms, they struggled in the first half last week against Topeka. Really turned it around in the second half. Off kind of to the same start here as two plays in in the first pass play, they get burned deep. Omaha trying to take the lead now with Jeremy Reynolds. Placement is down on the kick and it is blocked. The Liberty blocked it. It looked like Shaq Barrett in there. Got the block for the Salina Liberty, and he has turned away. Reynolds on the kick, has it blocked as Shaq Barrett comes through, and we will remain tied at six. Brian? Shaq made it around that end untouched. We all know he's got extreme quickness coming off that line. He was able just to extend, get his body out in front of that kick. Big play, kind of takes a little bit of the sting off the long touchdown pass. Everybody knows Andrew Jackson. You give him time, he can pick you apart. He's not very mobile. Doesn't look like he's missed a meal either because he's uh, not the fleetest of foot in that backfield, but he is accurate and he is a sharp shooter, so you can't give him time to go downfield. Yeah, and those front three, Brian, you talked about it. They're going to have to get pressure on Andrew Jackson to get him out of the pocket. We know he works best in the pocket whether it's for he feels comfortable in there or he just can't get outside the pocket. But if you give him time, he can throw dimes just like we saw in that second play of the game. So a couple of former Liberty players hooking up here for a touchdown for the beef. And we are tied at 728 left to go here in the first quarter. Back deep, Trey Griffin. He is set to receive the offering from Jeremy Reynolds. Reynolds will check his coverage team to the left, now to the right. And the kick, low line drive, is going to curl and go out of bounds and nail a gal with a beer in the VIP. Did she spill the beer, Free Brian? Free kick kicked out of bounds. Did. did she? I, Ball would be placed at the 25 yard line. How will we enforce half the distance of the goal? In this uh, area, Ball will be uh, placed at the 12 and a half yard line. Here. First down, that Salina. Darren uh, Allen. Uh, Am I saying that correctly? 
Yes. I don't know. <laughs> it was number nine. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that poor guy got nailed. But the good nature of the folks in the VIP, a gentleman picked the ball up and handed it to her as if to say, I'm sorry about your luck. Here is your football. Uh, no offense, but it was a free beer. Yeah, because you wore it. So here is a give to Griffin now. He's trying to pick his way to the right-hand side. He's going to work his way almost back to the line of scrimmage. There's a flag on the play with 7.07 left to go here in the first quarter that we will have to check once again. Illegal defense, number 31, linebacker at four yards. I mean, if you're going to guess yard previous what spot. the penalty's going to be, you're first probably 90% right if you're going to call illegal defense in this league. An illegal defense is basically an interpretation. We used to kind of lose our minds over this call, but over the years, as we've heard different officiating crews explain the call, it's movement. I mean, it's pre-snap movement. It could be a half a step towards the line of scrimmage. It could be a slide step. It could be a lot of things. So, obviously, they are watching very closely for that illegal defense. Here's another flag as the Liberty throw it out on first and five to the right-hand side. It's a gain of two on the play. And now we have another stoppage. And I'm not sure it's the same line judge that kind of got hit early. Illegal so formation. He's the one throwing all the flags. Not a minute line sure scrimmage. Offense. Hit, but Five yards penalty. A, a false start Repeat first you, down. On the on the wide receiver, it appeared. Yeah, they they said illegal formation that time. So I think there was a confused look by all of Salina, saying I don't know what we did wrong, but pushes you back. What is it second down? So it should be still first down, first, first and down, 10. Okay. Yeah. Got a five yard penalty, gave up a five yard penalty back where we started this drive from the 13. First down for the Liberty, empty backfield for Tyree Adams. He goes out to the right hand side. This is going to be a little bit of a dance and then a twist and a turn and a good advancement on that play out to the 20 yard line. I think that's Fast Ed Smith for a gain of seven. Yeah, and a great job there by Ed as he's, he's kind of undersized at 5'9", 170, but had two guys kind of corral him about the 17-yard line and able to go up three more yards and bring up a second down and short. We call him Fast Ed, but we saw him work the middle of the field and kind of get some of those tough-earned catches last week, didn't we? Here's a second down now and a three-yard to go range for the Liberty. They're going to hand it off to Trey Griffin. He works off to the right-hand side and gets maybe a yard and a half and they'll bring up third down and one. We still have not seen Tracy Brooks since he came out of the game. Yeah, and it's 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 downs like this where you, where Tracy Brooks really plays into your favor when you got second and short and now third and, I don't even know if I'd call that a full yard, but. It, it's third in a football. Yeah, and him and Trey Griffin just polar opposite size-wise and game-wise. Third and short for Salina. They're gonna snap the football from the 22-yard line. Trey Griffin in the backfield, does not get it. Instead, they screen it out to Fast Ed. Ed's gonna come across the midfield stripe at the 25, 24, 23, 22, and a first down for the Liberty. Move the chains on a crafty little screen play to the left-hand side, Tyree Adams to Fast Ed Smith. Yeah, and a great job by all three offensive linemen right there, initially on the snap, just took off to the left and allowed Fast Ed Smith to make one move and get around to the right side of them to pick up the first down. 4.49 left to play. First quarter, it is six to six. That's our score. First down and 10 for the Liberty from their own, or excuse me, from the Omaha 22 yard line. Pitch out right hand side. Trey Griffin gets a couple of hard earned yards and then he is hammered down after a two yard gain at the 20 yard line. Football will set just outside of the 20 for a second down and eight. And Devin, this is something you and I talked about having this kind of two horse show in the backfield at Trey Griffin and Tracy Brooks and maybe that the Liberty would kind of just run it at them until they could stop them. And now what it appears is you're down to just Trey Griffin. So does that change your game plan a little bit? Second down from the 20. Kelvin McCoy, the southpaw center, reaches down, grabs the football. They're loaded up on the left-hand side. Tyree Adams fakes the screen, goes to the end zone. Fast dead on a crossing route. We're supposed to meet the football there at the corner of the end zone, but the football just a little bit out wide in front of him, unable to make the catch, and now that'll bring up third down and long. Yeah, and Tyree just kind of, he tried to out throw the coverage there as fast Ed Smith had a, maybe a half a step on the cornerback, but would have been a really precise pass to get in there. 3.38 left to go here in the first. Each team have scored on their opening drives. 
This is the second drive for the Liberty. Six to six is our score. Third down and eight. Tyree Adams back to pass in the pocket. Wants to go long to the end zone by himself without anybody around him. A catch and a touchdown for Isaiah Scott. Holy cow, he was open. Okay, he was wide open, Devin. Isaiah Scott ran a great drag route across the back of the end zone. But how much time did Tyree Adams have to throw that ball there? He did not have to scramble, just a three-step drop, two-step up, let the wide receiver break the coverage down, just step up and make a nice, easy throw. A great job there by Kelvin McCoy and his comrades up front. Tyree Adams gets his third passing touchdown of the season. Isaiah Scott on the reception, wide open. And now an extra point attempt. Michael Persley has been called upon. Tracy Brooks is usually the holder. He has been scrubbed out of this game too. The extra point is up and good by Michael Persley. So the former KO from Kyo from k gets an extra point. Media. And he puts Salina up by seven. Media timeout, 231 left to go here in Salina. The Liberty lead Omaha, 13 to six on KINA. creates a winning set of finished products which saves their customers money. Don't rely on so-so electrical. Visit the team at Precision Electrical Contractors online at PECSalina.com. Don't go another day with roof problems. Ryan Roofing will provide you with the world's best roof, the Duralast Roofing System, custom prefabricated to fit your specific building. Your Duralast roof will be leak-free with virtually no maintenance. It's resistant to fire, high winds, chemicals, and temperature extremes. Plus, there are potential energy savings versus traditional roofing. Ryan Roofing has installed over 10 million square feet of Duro Last Roofing. Trust Ryan Roofing to solve your commercial roofing needs. Call for a quote today 825-0475. PRP or platelet rich plasma injection therapy has received quite a bit of attention since it's used by many professional athletes. Professional football players like Peyton Manning and Jamal Charles have used PRP therapy for sports injuries and to avoid surgery. But you don't have to be a world class athlete with millions of dollars for this cutting-edge therapy, PRP is available to you in the Salina Pain Clinic. Call the doctors for a consultation and see if this treatment is right for you. See them at 200 South 5th in the Salina Surgical Arts Center. You're listening to Liberty Football on KINA. Back here at Tony's Pizza Events Center. A lot of great events coming on here at Tony's Pizza Events Center, of course, after... Almost two years where there were no events in 2020 and then 2021 started creeping back in. This has been a busy, busy, busy place, Russell. As you look at all the events that have gone on, a farm show just got done here. Yesterday afternoon, you and I were walking through the arena and you said, you know what, less than 24 hours ago, there's a bunch of tractors and stuff in here, a bunch of implements and, and farm equipment. And they did a really good job getting everybody out last night flipping the arena, cleaning everything up, and putting the football setup in. So salute to the setup crew and everybody here at Tony's Pizza Event Center. Yeah, this Tony's Pizza Event Center staff really does a great, great job with everything here, the hospitality for everyone involved. And I want to point something out, Devin. One, one thing I noticed on the uh, Salina Liberty social media post late last night, probably 10 o'clock, I would say, maybe when they got the last tractor out of here was – I saw in the picture that the whole ownership group was in here laying turf down, helping the Tony's Pizza Event Center staff no, I don't getting this ready. Yeah, I don't, I don't doubt it at all. These, this ownership group, Heron O'Neill speaks highly of them, and they are the best ever. I mean, it's they are not afraid to get their hands dirty. They will show up, and they will do whatever it takes. It, you know, we do a coaches show every Monday down at AJ's in the Alley, downtown Salina from 5.30 to 6.30, and uh, Tom Perez, you know, and whoever, they're always the ones that show, they show up and set up the backdrop. They want to know if we need anything, anything they can do to help. It, it is always great. And then they just stick around for the show and have dinner and, you know, players show up and they get they get something to eat. So it's a, it's a great, great thing that they, they are a super group to work with. Here is a kickoff now by Persley taken by Omaha 13-yard line out to the 15 across the midfield stripe at the 25. 
and into Liberty territory at about the 23 and a half yard line. That'll get us going back here in the first quarter. 13 to six is our score. Each team has had the ball. Salina twice, they have 13 points. Omaha, this is the start of their second possession. They scored six on their opening drive. Yeah, and see right here, Salina's defense, the defensive line up front, you know, led by probably one of my favorite players after last week, Keenan Gibbs, and everybody talks so highly of him, talking down in the locker room. So just a big thing to see if this defensive line can get pressure on Andrew Jackson. Omaha will put two receivers out to the left-hand side that'll go in motion, one of them also in the slot, so they're loaded up to the left. Jackson throws a crossing route underneath. This is gonna be a spin and a broken tackle by Omaha that will take it inside the 20-yard line to the 18. That, once again, is Tyler Jones. And look at the beef here. They wanna hurry things up. Yeah, just trying to get a hurry-up offense. I kind of noticed this in a game before. They they did it for about two drives and then kind of went away from it. But I don't. I suspect now in the biggest lead game so far in week two that they will continue. Again, loaded up left-hand side. They're going to pitch it out this time to Deshaun Jones, and he gets stood up and rattled big time. You mentioned Keenan Gibbs. He is a load. He's a brand-new defensive lineman this year for the Liberty. And when you look at him, he is a monster. Also, Tron Folson in there as well from his linebacker spot. Yeah, Keenan Gibbs kind of originally made the running back come back in, but Tron Folsom, just an absolute animal coming up the middle right there. I interviewed Tron on our coaches show on Monday. Great guy from Alma, Georgia. Here's a crossing route to Tyler Jones, broken up by Kendrick Harper. K-Hop was burnt on that first touchdown, so you better believe he is going to have a stellar game from here on out. Yeah, and that was probably a, a great route by the wide receiver, but K-Hop right there coming in late with that right arm to kind of punch the football out before he could tuck it back in. So a huge fourth down and about four yards, three, four yards here to go for the Salina defense. Big fourth down here for the Beef. They have the football at the 17 and a half yard line, closing seconds of the first quarter, trying to convert and move the chains. Jackson, empty backfield. Two by two with his receivers under a blitz, gets hit, they complete it to Jones. Jones sidesteps the defender and dives into the end zone for an Omaha touchdown. Jackson paid the price on the hit, but again, he hits Ty Jones on the right-hand side for a touchdown, and that'll bring us to the end of the first quarter right after the point-after attempt. Man, Tyler Jones, Brian, I know you and I remember him when he was here with the Liberty. He was very rarely in uniform. He was mostly in street clothes watching games. Man, he is just blown up with Omaha. Yeah, he's definitely got his confidence situation he gets himself you know it's not flashy but he just finds those open spaces and he's not extremely big but he's he's bulky he's got that size to him enough to be able to push the defender back enough again he created that missed tackle Omaha goes for two Jackson back to throw here comes heat again he's gonna get hit again here's a catch and it's gonna be outside of the goal line and the Liberty taking down the receiver, Montero Du Bois, outside, and it'll be denied. Liberty retain a one-point lead. At the end of one, back with more Liberty football. It's 13 to 12. Into the so first quarter. Into a one-point lead, as you listen to a live right here on KINA.
Back here at Tony's Pizza Event Center, Devin Haney, Russ Castle, Brian Berner, as we are watching a really competitive game so far, 13 to 12, Salina leading by one as we start second quarter action. We have flipped the field now, and Jeremy Reynolds will kick off now, working from our right to left, as Trey Griffin, three yards deep in the end zone for the Salina Liberty. This ball over a couple of heads for the Salina Liberty, and then it will bounce over the wall and out of bounds. That is a really good piece of kicking there by Jeremy Reynolds. Brian, you have an update on Tracy Brooks. Yeah, not good news. Uh, you know, we noticed Free kick hit the field play went out of bounds. The, field, the that spot that, uh, went out. Arm was First down. Hanging down. The wrist was going a little bit different angle. Have been able to confirm it is a broken wrist. So TBA to be determined as far as we go throughout the season, but not good news tonight as far as the game plan would go for Coach Ron O'Neill. However, keep in mind, you've got a solid second runner, so the team should be okay. Last year's MVP of the league, Tracy Brooks, with a broken wrist here in the first quarter of game number two for the Salina Liberty. Tyree Adams and crew back out there as Kelvin McCoy will get things started. Salina starts out at their own eight yard line. Little screen pass out to the right hand side. Isaiah Scott will catch it and he will be pushed up against the wall to stop that play. That's a gain of four and brings up second down and six. And kind of something we saw last week against Topeka as well for the Salina team is Omaha, kind of like Topeka, does not want to get beat deep. We saw that early last week, just getting the four or five yard hitch routes. And you talked about it a lot with Ed Smith was a target on that. Isaiah Scott being a lot bigger body, look for him to wall up a defensive back for six or seven yards. Anthony Love, who was also a target in Topeka last week, he is on the short term IR for Salina right now. Here's Adams back to pass. Might have his face mask grabbed there on that play, but he gets away, throws the football to the right hand side. There's no foul for Tisha Grounding. Was able to throw it Quarterback away. was out of the pocket. No flag on the, play. the ball made it past the line of scrimmage. Seven. Yeah, just kind of a tough block there for, for Trey Griffin to pick up that middle linebacker. I couldn't tell who it was coming up the middle, but a spot where you would see Tracy Brooks sure handedly kind of, kind of pick that up, but Trey being as much undersized as he is, it's just a tough spot for him to be in. So a big conversion point here for the Salina Liberty, third down and seven. They are at their own 12-yard line. Tyree Adams with two receivers in the motion on the left-hand side. He wants to go deep, has one, and he overthrows his intended receiver on that play. That might have been Fast Ed Smith at about the 24-yard line across the midfield stripe, and that'll bring up fourth down. So now a decision time here, and they're going to bring out Michael Persley, who will come out and kick one away from inside of his own five-yard line. I think Tyree had Ed Smith open there, Russ. He just overthrew him a little too high and too hot. Yeah, just like he had on that touchdown in the quarter, of the, or on the corner of the end zone in the first quarter there. And the first drive we have seen stalled out by either team so far that did not score. Well, we don't know that yet. Of course, if you get points in this situation, it is extremely bonus and blessed. But personally, we'll kick it out of the hole to Tyree Adams from his own five-yard line. Placement is down, Persley's kick is up. It's gonna come up short and a return opportunity here for Omaha. Chris Perry, back to the five, 10, 15, 20, and is tackled there in the open field. A good, good open field tackle there by the Liberty by Tron Folson. And Tron will be our guest at halftime as we look into the Precision Electric Player Profile for the Salina Liberty. Some new faces this year that we need to get to know and we'll start with Tron here at halftime coming up in about 12 minutes and 12 seconds of scoreboard time. Omaha with good field position here, guys, and it seems like they've kind of flipped the field here if there is such a thing in indoor football. Liberty started out at their own 10-yard line and was unable to get but three yards, and now they turn it back to Omaha, who starts at midfield. Yeah, and, and like you said, a great kick there by Jeremy Reynolds to kind of put him in shape there. And a one-point one game right now as we go into it. Two guys in motion on the right-hand side for Omaha. Jackson wants to throw it, almost intercepted by Tron Folson. As he was up there, extended, had his hands on the football, just unable to complete the catch. And that'll bring up second down and 10 after the near pick by Folson. Yeah, and Tron Folson there was probably the, saved a touchdown right there as that crossing route was wide open over the middle and Tron read that great, two back pedals, broke to the football and a great read. He looks big on the field, doesn't he? I mean, he looks like 6'1", 6'2", like really big guy, but he's not that big. 
Here's Jackson back to throw, screens it off, and it's going to be dropped. Rashad Pargo unable to catch the ball. I've seen that a few times as he is a former Salina Liberty player as well. 10.59 left to go, second quarter. Now that puts Omaha in a tough situation here, third down and 10. Yeah, and this is where you want to see that defensive line kind of get through, you know, Travis Taylor and Keenan Gibbs up the middle to try to get pressure on Andrew Jackson. Empty backfield, Jackson, quick throw to Du Bois, trying to make his way somewhere, and he cannot as he is taken down by Folson. Dontre Matthews also in on the play. Who else is that? I would love to be able to read these numbers. <laughs> Yeah, Omaha got real easy numbers for us to read up here. And that is going to be Evan Ray. E. Ray in on that tackle. 10-14 left to go. Beef with a fourth down conversion. It is fourth and five coming up. Jackson again emptying the backfield. Four wide receivers, two by two. The slot guys will be in motion. Jackson sends them. Gets the snap. Has to step up. Wants to run. And he's going to be taken down a yard short from behind with the tackle for the Liberty is Keenan Gibbs. The ruling of the field is short of the line to gain. First down, Salina. So Gibbs able to swipe the ankles and take Andrew Jackson down, and that's going to get a very nice ovation from this crowd. What a play by Keenan Gibbs. And I kind of talked about him in the pregame. Keenan Gibbs, just after last week watching him play, watching his energy, and his first year, I believe, in indoor football, at least here in Salina, just the leadership he has is just a great asset to have up the middle. 9.52 left to go. Second quarter, working our way towards halftime. Salina not hurt there. They were helped out by the defense. Start they got the, clock. the football back in almost the same spot that they gave it up from the 17. Three receivers to the right-hand side. Tyree Adams gets the snap. He'll pass it quickly to Ed Smith, and he'll make the catch at the 20-yard line. Gain of four on the play, second down and six coming up. Yeah, and you can tell Omaha is, is not wanting to get beat deep as they're kind of dropping way back. They had guys almost at the goal line right there, and just Ed Smith able to pick up four yards. And at this point, you have to take what the defense is going to give you and take them short shots. 13-12, our score. Now they will move the receiving core, three of them to the left-hand side. A single to the right. Theron Allen over here on the right-hand side all by himself. They're going to screen it now into the middle. This is the slot man. And a catch made there by Theron Allen. He'll take it across the midfield stripe to the 23-yard line and a first down for the Liberty. And Tyree spreading the ball around to everybody here early in this Second quarter as everybody seems to be getting in the action. Give you guys a little piece of advice. Ed Smith, bright colored shoes. <laughs> Thank you. Here's the give to Trey Griffin. Griffin's going to help move the pile here with his offensive lineman to the 20 yard line. I'm not quite sure what just went flying up into the stands right there, but. Yeah, I don't know either. It looked like it might have been a face shield off one of the helmets, but uh, went there like you're playing disc golf. They had good distance on it. Eight minutes left to play, second quarter. Liberty second down and seven from the 20. They're in Omaha territory. Quick screen out to the right-hand side. Allen has it. He's going to dance around, get back to the line of scrimmage, and nothing more, and that'll bring up a third down and seven. And you almost feel like this game's kind of setting up. Like, yeah, we're going to take our four or five yards every time, and we're going to give it to you. And the one time Omaha jumps up, Haran O'Neal might try to go deep on him. You do feel like there's a setup play coming here because a lot of things have been within three yards to the line of scrimmage and five yards to the line of scrimmage. Third down and seven here. Kelvin McCoy will snap it from the Omaha 20. Two guys in motion, left-hand side. Stack of three receivers over there. A quick out at the sticks to Theron Allen. And he's going to have it just inside of the 15-yard line. And it will be fourth down and one. 
Yeah, just no hesitation right there once again as Tyree Adams runs over to first ballot Hall of Famer Coach Ron O'Neill and says, give me this fourth down play. Actually, it's going to be closer to fourth down and two where they're going to spot this football. Liberty, though, looks like they want to go for it. Fourth down and two. Trey Griffin, right hip of Adams, a flag on the play. Griffin's going to have it. He's going to spin his way to the 10 yard line. It'll be a first down, but a flag on the far side as there was movement up front. They're going to say offsides on Omaha. Offside. It'll be a first down in anyway the neutral zone. For the Number Salina 98 Liberty defense. Offense. Brian, there was movement Five yard up front. Five yards from the previous spot. The yard the results. Beat. Yeah, movement first uh, down. against Omaha. Needless to say, first down was achieved without the penalty. My concern, I thought, you know, is that the opportunity? Is that the play call where you just let Houdini loose? You just let uh, your quarterback find that seam and go. Talked about going long. I know this is the situation that Salina has had the opportunity. Trey Dudley's running a straight line. If Salina breaks just a little bit, they have that opportunity to go deep. End around fake to Thrawn Allen. Now he's going to go out on the flank. He's going to catch it and lose a yard. Turned after he got the catch and didn't have any time to react as Chris Perry was there to make the tackle. Yeah, just an excellent, excellent open field tackle by Chris Perry right there. Kind of tried to make one move and Perry didn't slow down and was able to corral him. Looks like they're going to take a one yard loss on that play. Moving back to the 11. So it is second down and goal from the 11 yard line. Tyree Adams. Takes a snap, quarterback keeper inside the 10, dives down to the six, twist his way to the five, and they're gonna say the initial contact at the six was enough to call him down. It'll be third down and goal at the six, Brian. Guys, this is a situation too where not having Anthony Love in the lineup right now, you're taking out a 6'5 receiver, and we talked about last week, he's got that ability with his height. He was very comfortable going across the back of that end zone, a high target for Adams to look at. Not in the lineup tonight, so we'll see what uh, what Salina tries to go with here. From the six, third down and goal for Salina. Inside five minutes left to play. Two guys run into each other, and now Tyree Adams has to scramble, and he's going to be brought down at the nine. It'll be a loss of almost four yards on the play for the Liberty, and Coach Ron O'Neill is going to summon the field goal unit. Boy, that was disastrous there for the red, white, and blue. Yeah, both, both receivers there in motion just kind of ran right into each other and into Tyree, and had nowhere to go and kind of makes your decision easy right now is you got to kick the field goal as you're at fourth and goal from the nine yard line. Tyree Adams will put this one down. He'll take it out of the hold of Kelvin McCoy. Tyree will put it down at the 16 yard line for Michael Persley's 24 yard attempt. Snap a little bit low. Tyree fishes it out though and Persley punches it through. Another three points for the Salina Liberty as Michael personally scores from 24 yards out, and we are to media break. Media, left to media play. timeout. Here in Salina, 16 to 12 now. Salina leading Omaha here on KINA.
Welcome back, Tony's Pizza Event Center. 16 to 12 is our score. As we're working our way towards the Precision Electric halftime break, Salina leading Omaha by four. We went a long time without a score before that Michael Persley field goal. Almost a whole quarter of play before the field goal by Michael Persley. Salina scored with 3.11 left to go in the first quarter. Right now there's 4.15 left to go in the second quarter as these two teams trying to figure each other out as Omaha here visiting Salina. Pursley has it teed up all the way to the right edge of the end zone. He will kick out of. Kickoff high, twisting, turning all the way back over the head of Brian Burner. And that's not a good thing for Salina because Brian Burner. Free kick, come through the wall in the end zone. Ball placed at 25 yard line. So that'll be great. First down. Position coming up for the Omaha Beef at the 25 yard line. As you like to say, oh so close. If that thing, it was a foot from bouncing off the top of the wall and a foot results in a 20 yard difference there starting at the five versus starting at midfield. Yes, sir. So Andrew Jackson will bring his offense out here and they will start at midfield with 3.58 left to go. Still working our way through the first half, only head to head game here tonight featuring two CIF teams playing each other. Here's the snap to Jackson. Wants to go to the end zone. Overthrows the receiver incomplete. Coverage provided by Dwayne Autry and Dontre Matthews. Yeah, and Dwayne Autry there made a great play at the last second to kind of go up over top of the wide receiver real close to pass interference there. I don't know if that one would have been catchable anyway. I like Dwayne's getup, man. I like his costume because I know it's him. Yellow gloves, yellow shoes. Yeah, I now you got one guy across <laughs> from him wearing yellow shoes as well. At least we know the yellow gloves yeah. is Dwayne. I don't have to guess. that I can. don't have to read that number. Corey Williams on the left-hand side playing corner with just the yellow shoes. He did not get in on the shoes-gloves combo. Here's a flag now that will blow this play down before game. it starts. And it is Offense. delay of game. Five-yard penalty. Yeah, they've First been down. close a few times there. Serrano so Neal now trying to get the crowd involved into this. They've been close running that down to the play clock about within a second or two about every snap. Are you really anxious to see what Brian's going to ask Coach O'Neill at halftime? I have been waiting since kickoff. Yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> you have three minutes to figure it out. I do know I can catch him. He's hobbling. And technically, the guys, those, those shoes are color rush green. Yes, love it. Here is inside the 20, just barely. Omaha now, second down and 15. Jackson to pass over the middle. And it would have been intercepted if it did not hit his receiver in the back. Dwayne Autry was camped up, posted up, had his arms out, waiting on the football, thinking, when I catch this, I'm going to house it the other way. I'm going to run 35 yards, and I'm going to house this football. But then it went right into the backside of Alex Noble. Yeah, just a precision pass right between the numbers, but on the wrong side of the jersey. Yeah, the interesting thing right now, Coach Marvin Jones is over there telling his quarterback and his team, hey, guys, just calm down. Because Andrew Jackson was not happy that his receiver didn't turn around. I don't think after what Marvin Jones did earlier, he has anybody to give anybody advice. Here's Jackson now over the middle. He was falling down and completes this ball. I don't know how he does some of the things he does. Andrew Jackson was almost horizontal, falling down, and somehow gets that right arm up and pegs a receiver for a first down and a big, big conversion for the beef now with 134 left to go. Yeah, and it's that crossing route that really, if you go back to the 2021 CIF Champions Bowl, that the middle of the field has been detrimental to the Salina defense for a while now. 119 left to go. Clock is running. Remember, Omaha has all three of their timeouts left. And Omaha gets the ball to start the second half. Thank you very much. Three receivers on the right-hand side. Here's the handoff right up the middle on a run. One tackle broken, but then a committee comes to 
take in Deshaun Jones. And that will bring us to the 62nd One timeout. minute warning. 16 to 12. One minute timing rules is are now in effect. Salina has one timeout. Break, to Omaha has half. three. Media, timeout. Sixty seconds left here in the first half. Omaha has the football at a second down and about four from the seven yard line. Knocking on the door, one minute left here. They have all three timeouts remaining. Andrew Jackson will send two receivers on the left hand side. Here's the handoff to the running back and a gain of maybe a half a yard. That is gathered in there by Deshaun Jones. That'll bring up third down and about four. Yeah, and Keenan Gibbs once again right up the middle as he's kind of having his way with the center up front, but got to get the secondary to get some coverage on the back side here. Football setting just outside of the six. Ron O'Neill asking this crowd to get into it a little bit and make some noise. Clock at 30. And Omaha will take we a timeout. Delay a game. As they the timeout. All the way down. They don't want to leave Omaha. any time here. First charge of the half, to be able to 30 go seconds the field and potentially get a score. As you said, Russ, they're looking to double up here and bracket this halftime with a, with Omaha scores. Yeah, and just you're, you're looking for the two for one here. Is get points on the board late, late in the half, manage the clock. Kind of like in the fourth quarter of that doomsday game we had in Champions Bowl last year, manage the clock just right, and it comes down to, to a block extra point or a block field goal. And Marvin Jones, Managing the clock well here has appears to be two timeouts left still with 28 seconds. So really the playbook's kind of wide open. 28 seconds left to go. Omaha third down and about four. They can get a first down at the three yard line. Play clock running down here now under 10 as Omaha just now breaks the huddle. They might have to burn another time out here, take five yards. And they did. They did not get out of the huddle in time. And they got to burn another time out. Before the leg game, so time out. Omaha, right? <laughs> second charge of the half. Just a lack 30 of focus seconds there by Omaha in late. Taking back to back timeouts. Yeah, I don't think they were really aware of when the play clock started. Here's the situation with 28 seconds. You're this close down. I don't know if that having that extra timeout is really going to come into factor. They'll still have one. You're looking at, you know, what, seven seconds, eight seconds of play. Um, you know, hopefully, hopefully you get a big stop. Let's make it come back and haunt them. 16-12 is our score. Omaha trying to come back from being down by four. Big third down conversion here. Third down and four. They're going to pitch it underneath, and that one is going to be blown up by Keenan Gibbs. Keenan Gibbs, Tron Folson, two of the newcomers, eight of that play alive as the handoff from Deshaun Jones coming underneath. 
They got there the same time the ball did, and Deshaun Jones didn't have a chance. Yeah. That's going to lose two, maybe three yards for the beef. And it looked like Salina called there last time. Salina, third and, and final of the half. Yeah, because you would expect your Omaha to run line. it down with 22 seconds left in their 25-second play clock to just run it down and get the last play there. So, Heron O'Neal, a great job there, use of the timeout, just hoping it doesn't come back. You need your defense to make one more stand here. Well, and you look, ultimately you just want to give up one play here, and the chances of them running more than one play aren't really that great. Like I said, they can get a first down, but that's at the three-yard line. Right now the line of scrimmage is back here at about the eight. So if they, do, if they are successful on this play, more than likely they're going to move it into the end zone. Big stand coming up here as Andrew Jackson's all the way out on the right-hand side trying to get it traffic directed. Play clock down to nine. That's yeah, total confusion right now for Omaha. He's going to send the receivers, one on each side. Jackson tries to slant. Tyler Jones has it. He's taken down inside the one-yard line. The official says it's going to be one foot to go. As Jones was taken down, the clock now stopped at 14 seconds. First to move down. The it is a first down for Omaha. And all that garbage I said about running more than one play just went out the window. Timeout. Omaha. Omaha's going to take their last Second timeout. charge of the half. 30 seconds in length. So no timeouts remaining for either squad. 14 seconds left to play. Omaha has the football. The nose of the football flirting with the goal line here and a first down and goal. More than likely, though, they're only going to get one Correction, play. that's Omaha's last pass. charge timeout. Yeah, with Both teams are out of timeouts. Andrew Jackson, I don't know why you don't try to tuck him up under center here and get a half a yard, but Keenan Gibbs is running havoc right now in the middle of that field. I wish Andrew Jackson would move to jersey number 22. Jared Lorenzen was one of my favorite quarterbacks. Jackson going to try the quarterback sneak. I think he's in. And he's in. He got some help that time from his running back, Deshaun Jones who came in and helped push the backside into the end zone. And with nine seconds left, Omaha's going to score and make this an 18 to 16 game. Okay, Still so in the first half. And you come back with nine seconds left here, you're going to have one on time down. Omaha's going to have to kick off. They're going to have a choice to make. Do you, do you squib it, make them touch it to where the clock keeps running? Do you give Trey Griffin a chance to run it back out? Does Salina get it and run it out of bounds real quick to try to get one play? There's tons of options here that can happen. Omaha bringing Jeremy Reynolds on for the extra point, trying to get the full field goal advantage here going into the locker room at half. Deshaun Jones will be the holder as Reynolds will kick out of the hold at the nine-yard line. Snap comes back a little bit low, and Salina almost got that one up too. Shaq Barrett already has one block tonight. He was on that one along with Tron Fulson, but the extra point goes through. And it is 16 to 19. Omaha with a three point lead. And we talked to Heron O'Neill kind of before the season started and, and brought Coach Cavanaugh in here. He kind of has taken over the special teams role here. So he was the first one out off the bench to get his guys out there to try to set up some sort of return here with nine seconds left. Do you play it where you try to run it? There's a, there's a lot of things that can happen here in nine seconds. 19-16, our score. Omaha has just taken a three-point lead with nine seconds left to go. And hey guys, one of the things that uh, you know I kind of wonder if Salina will do is will Coach Kavanaugh try to position Dwayne Autry where he may have an opportunity to get to the ball. Remember back in Topeka, Dwayne had some, a chance to take one back, called back from a penalty, but he's definitely a threat anytime he has the ball in his hands. Yeah, Dwayne kind of motions Trey Griffin to go to the other side, and they kind of split the field in half here, so they're going to make him kick to one or the other. Jeremy Reynolds will diagnose this for Omaha. Griffin moves more back to the middle of the field, and Reynolds is gonna take it in a big hop and a bounce that's gonna take a ton of time. Moves Griffin back to the one yard line. Actually, this might be... There's a block in the Allen. back. This is Junior Allen. 
There's a flag on the play. Allen still on his feet. He's going to bring it back to the 15-yard line. There's no time left on the clock. It's Theron Allen. Yeah, and Dwayne Autry, sorry, Devin, but Dwayne Autry had a clear block in the back right in front of the official. Okay. Get the official call here. That should bring us to halftime, but let's make sure as we will have During return, Ryan, block in the back. Visit with Ron Number O'Neal. five receiving team. That pin is declined. Halftime. Halftime is here. Let's get comments from the coach as he will make his way to the locker room here from Brian Bernard. 16 to 19. Liberty trailing by three as we get ready to go to the break. Don't forget electric player profile. Brian, take it away. You're with Coach. Coach, down by three at halftime. Thoughts on this first half? Basically, we had our opportunities on defense on third and 18 and on fourth down on that last drive. We didn't make the play. They did. Um, we got to play better on the defensive side of the ball, even though giving up only 19 points. We got to do better in our run game up front, offensive line wise, um, and, and move some bodies off the ball because right now we're not doing that. Without Tracy Brooks in the second Please half, we set the game clock to 20. Started well, in my we basically line. Got what we got. We set we the game clock to 20. You let Slyne get off the field. Thank you. Thank you. 19 16 is 20 our minutes score. on the game Omaha clock. Leading Salina by three. We're at the Precision Electric halftime show. When we come back, an interview with Tron Folson. He's the new linebacker for the Salina Liberty, and we had a chance to sit down with him earlier this week. 1916, Omaha leads Salina here at the break on KINA. 1916, our score here at the break. We are just about ready to start third quarter action. Omaha's on the field. As back deep for them to receive this kick, Deshaun Jones. Michael Persley putting it on the tee as he shades it just to the right of the hash marks, more center of the field than what he was doing in the first half. 1916, Liberty down by three. Here we go, second half action. Both these teams yet to experience a loss here early on in the season, 2022. This is a good kick by Persley. It goes off the fingertips of one of the up backs and then into the hands of Jones, who will take it to the 19. He has never brought down, just stopped there and forward progress will bring on the whistles, and Omaha will start to begin this third quarter on offense from their own 19. How big of a possession is this, Russ? I mean, you can typically go up by two scores here. If you're Omaha, you go down and get a touchdown. Yeah, nobody's had a two-score lead in this game. It's just kind of been back and forth, and you know, maybe this is the test that the Salina Liberty defense needs. We've, we've seen them get burnt last week. We've seen them get burnt this week, and you know, and. Matthews and Dwayne Autry and everybody in that secondary K hop, you know, got to get rallied together and get on the same page to stop this Omaha beef offense. First down and 10, they'll go empty backfield. Three wide receivers on the right hand side. Jackson back to pass. Ducks under a would be tackler and has a ball go off the fingertips of Du Bois. Nearly intercepted in that Salina Liberty secondary. Incomplete pass will bring up second down and 10. Yeah, and once again, Keenan Gibbs up the middle. Just an absolute animal. Maybe a little bit undersized, you know, weight-wise at 265, but it is a solid 265 up there up the middle for them to control. Gibbs right now playing on the right end. Shaq Barrett on the left end. Here's a completion that goes for eight and an immediate tackle in the secondary for Salina by Evan Ray. Brian, am I missing Travis Taylor with these new jerseys? Has Trap played a lot tonight? I, I just don't remember seeing him. He's been out there some, but the number of reps he's had has not been quite what we're used to. There's a flag on the third down run for Omaha. It also went for nothing as Jones tried to sweep it off to the right-hand side and he was brought down immediately by a bunch illegal of defense. defensive players. Number 22, and they're linebacker inside five yards. Against the Liberty. Five yards from the, the previous spot. Yard is result so far on in the first Liberty. down. That's saying a lot. As they do get an illegal defense here that gives Omaha a free first down. Yeah, they got Tron Folsom on that illegal defense. Not sure if he made some sort of adjustment there late at that middle linebacker spot. When you declare blitz, you're you're pretty much stuck in concrete right there until the ball is snapped. But a big, you know, that penalty gives Omaha first down here. First down and 10 at the 18-yard line. Jackson will send his receivers, and there's movement up front 
And this will either be a twitch by the offensive line or early movement by the defensive line. And the White Hat will say offside. Offside's defense. The contact. And I can't tell Brian. Can you tell defense. who's playing no Five yard for the previous spot. Yeah, that's First down. Uh, Zach Renoso. So Oso definitely got, uh, hey, I'm going to make contact. I'm going to put him on his back. He did. Just too early. 19-16. Omaha marching down the field here via penalties from the Liberty to start this half. Griffin, Barrett, the ends. Reynoso, the nose tackle in a four-point stance. Jackson gets the low snap, wants to go left, tried to slant, it's broken up and taken away. Dwayne Autry on coverage was right there on time. Yeah, an excellent play right there by Dwayne Autry, just jumping the route pretty much and being first to the ball, coming around on that offhand and not really hook and hold that wide receiver to just go make a play on the ball. Travis Taylor back in. Okay, you can't hook and hold with those gloves, they're gonna be visible. <laughs> Second down and five. Snap back to Jackson. He's going to be hit as he throws. Goes to the end zone. Front corner incomplete. Just stretched his receiver out a little too much as Jackson was hit when he threw that football. Looking for a receiver in the near corner. Now that will bring up third down and five. Yeah, it looked like Shaq Bradford got around on the corner there and was able to plant Andrew Jackson. Is, man, he... He holds onto the ball till the absolute last second and is not afraid to take a hit. Ball sitting at the 13 yard line. Omaha spending a ton of time in the huddle here. We saw them with two delay of games in the first half. They've had the clock now down to three. Jackson sends the receivers, takes the snap with one second on the play clock. A pass over the middle into the end zone, and it's going to be incomplete. Coverage provided on the play by Dontre Matthews, the Predator, in there, knocking that ball away. Incomplete, and it brings up a fourth down. And really kind of right there in front of you, Brian. Matthews was almost beat on that and able to cover himself back up. Yeah, I mean, he, he extended himself, dove out. Ball was just a little bit ahead of the receiver anyway, so it would have been a tough catch to make. But a good play by the defensive stance here. Fourth down five from the 13. We'll see. The Salina have one more in them. Fourth down and five. Play clock down to three. Omaha still getting organized, and they need to call a timeout. We'll step away. 10:35. We'll timeout. Back with the Omaha. Omaha. Down after this First charge timeout. of the half. 30 seconds in length. Ten thirty-five left to go. We're just underway. First drive of the second half here in the third quarter. Omaha with a fourth down and five. The Liberty defensive players asking for the assistance from this T-Pet crowd. Jackson, four receivers. Wants to pass. Lollipop over the top, complete. That's too easy. A touchdown there by Omaha. That's Alex Noble in on the catch for the beef. It's a little lob play. It said it's basically that's one of those plays, Russ, it looked like I'm going to throw it to this spot. You go meet the ball there. Yeah, just uh, just receiver Noble coming from the far side of the field, just a simple little drag route to the corner and just outran the defensive back and Andrew Jackson able to lob, him up, lob it up there and he takes another hit, but just enough time for him to lob it up there as you see Jeremy Reynolds coming in now for the extra point. Extra point blocked again. Shaq Barrett in there was able to get that extra point out of the air, and the Liberty recover it, and it will remain a nine-point lead, 25 to 16. There is a flag on the field. It was honestly, it looked like it was a quick snap. Generally, the officials tap each of the defenders on the line to make sure that their placement's good. Shaq Bradford went from the right side over to the left, 
to try to get off the extended Illegal coverage. defense number 94 was not the three point stance. That's exactly what That's they call it. Retry. So illegal defense, Omaha will get a second chance here to make this a 10 point game. Yeah, and I, I talked to Shaq earlier in the half after his first blocked attempt that he had, and he indicated, he goes, I can get back there. I will get back there again. And I think he's looking to see where are they extending the extra coverage on which side he's going to quickly go to that opposite side. He is in a four point stance right now on the left hand side of that defensive line. They'll try it again. Placement will come down at the nine. Here's Bradford, blocked it again! This one on the ground as Shaq Bradford is putting on a clinic and how to block extra points and field goals. And that's got a ring now in the heads of the Omaha Beef as they may try to make a field goal media. later in this game. Media timeout. And a media timeout. 9.41 left to go, third quarter. Score remains. Omaha 25, Salina 16 here on KINA. You know, guys, a game of tug of war is always a lot of fun, unless Shaq Bradford is across from you. Not only did he block extra points, Russ, he got in on that game of tug of war too. Yeah, just kind of one-handed him. Do you think maybe he had something to do with the outcome on that one? I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> maybe a little bit. <laughs> Two-score game. Omaha out in front, 25-16 over the Salina Liberty, 9:41 left to go here in the third quarter. I want to thank you for joining us. Of course, NCAA basketball going on tonight. We understand Villanova has moved on. They have punched their ticket to the Final Four. Jeremy Reynolds has it dead center of the field. He has it teed up and ready to kick it away. Trey Griffith, Dwayne Autry back for the Salina Liberty. Ball will go into the end zone. Take a bounce over the wall. And a five-yard placement. The rule in the field is the ball hit in the end zone Tyree and went Adams over by the rule. Of a touchback. Liberty the ball replaced the five-yard line. Just joining us, first MVP down. from last year, Tracy Brooks, out in the first quarter. Maybe his second touch of the game broke his wrist. So it has been Trey Griffin all the way here so far for the Salina Liberty. 25-16, Liberty with a full field in front of them. They start out here at their own five yard line. We're starting position of the day for the Liberty with nine and a half minutes left to go on the third. Two receivers in motion, right hand side. Pitch goes that way to Griffith. Has a little bit of a crease. He's able to explode through and get three yards. And that was something Heron O'Neill talked about in the run game. He, he wants to see this offensive line. They have to do better. They have to win the game up front. And, you know, being the first offensive possession at the game, I think he's going to test them early and say, hey, we need you guys. That play good for three. Clock now inside and nine minutes left to go here in the third. A 
Stack of three receivers to the left-hand side. A single over to the right. Adams will send two guys on the left in motion. Now he steps up, passes it, and it's going to skip at the 25-yard line. Pop up in the air off the turf and go incomplete. That'll bring up third down and seven. Yeah, really good coverage there by Omaha as they kind of disguised the guy almost on the far side of the field that just dropped back about midfield. And I don't, if that ball would not have hit the turf, it may have been intercepted. Yeah, that's, that's a good call, Russ. The ball was short, but Kelvin Jenkins of Omaha, had it been up just, you know, another couple feet, would have been able to step in and potentially could have had a deep return. Big conversion here, third down and seven for Salina. Tyree Adams takes it inside his own five, off the shotgun. Now he's gonna go out and run. He has it hanging out to his right-hand side. He's gonna dive across the 20-yard line and down at the 22, Houdini escapes the pocket and he is able to bring it out to the 22-yard line. It's a gain of nine and a first down for the Liberty. It's something we really haven't seen him do much, you know, this year is take off and run, but when the receivers like Ed Smith and Trey Griffin get out on one side, that middle of the field just kind of parts like the Red Sea, just step up and take eight, nine yards that the defense has given you. Fast Ed Smith will be in motion on the right-hand side. Tyree Adams empties the backfield. First down from the 21. Little screen play out here to Griffin. Trey has it, cuts it back to the middle, takes a big hit, and he's brought down at the 20 yard line. Nine yards. Maybe a little rhythm establishing now for this Liberty offense. Yeah, and this is a possession here where it's the first time in this game we've seen either team go up by, by two scores at a nine point game. So, really. Kind of an important possession here for Salina as the third quarter's ticking down with a little under seven minutes to go. Kelvin McCoy, the southpaw center, reaches down, grabs the football, he'll snap it from the 20. Stack of receivers on the right. Griffith goes that way, now cuts it back to the middle. Breaks one, two, three, tackles, ends up inside the 15 at the 14 yard line, and that'll be a first down for the Salina Liberty. A gain of seven on the play for Trey Griffith. And that was seven hard-earned yards that all go to number seven, Trey Griffin. Just kind of zigging, and zagging his way. They're breaking tackles one after the other to just know where the first down sticks are and then to get a little extra on top. Liberty continue to move the football down the field in the right way. Two receivers, one on each side in motion. The delay handoff to Trey. Griffin will be stood up with a hit to the lower back inside the 10 yard line. He'll fall to the nine, and that will be a gain of five yards. Second down and five coming up. Yeah, very quickly, Devin, this drive started at Salina's own five yard line, now inside the 10 of Omaha, and really pretty much just all run game. He had one pass that was just a quick out, almost a lateral pass to come out all for a run for Trey Griffin. Football inside of the 10 at the nine. Second down and five. Slot receivers in motion. Griffith, one of them, he'll take the handoff, trying to piece his way and negotiate his way through traffic inside of the 10. I think he got to the seven, and that'll be a two yard gain and bring up third down and three. The playbook's still wide open here. As you get that offensive line to give Tyree some protection, maybe that middle of the field comes open again, and we've seen Tyree Already once in this game, I believe the first drive of the game where he had about a six yard run for touchdown where he, the, the pocket kind of just parted for him and he was able to step up. From the seven, third down and three. Stack of receivers on the left hand side, Griffin in the backfield, Omaha's offsides. Tyree Adams sees it, rolls out to the right, goes to oh. the end zone and his receiver dropped the football. That would have been a touchdown for the Salina Liberty, but one of the receivers on the back wall dropped the football and dropped a touchdown. Isaiah Scott couldn't hang on to it. And yeah, he said, yeah, that's my bad, but I don't know Offside. if I've ever seen zone the staff, Tyree throw a ball seven, as hard as defense. what he just did. That thing After was a frozen the previous rope spot, to the back of the end zone, and we do get offsides. Down. Now here's the big thing on this offsides that gets, it brings up a first down now for Salina. So the playbook once again wide open as you're at the four yard line, four and a half, three yard line now, you got first and goal. Football setting between the three and the four, closer to the three. As Salina brings it to the line of scrimmage. Four and a half minutes left to go here in the third. They've chewed up yardage and time on this drive. 
Here's the give. Griffin has one guy to beat. Turns, gets into the end zone, over the goal line. Touchdown, Trey Griffin. 419 left to go here in the third. And the Salina Liberty claim another six points and make this a three-point game. Griffin on the night. His first rushing touchdown. And Brian, I'm going to throw it down to you. We know the Southpaw Kelvin McCoy out there at center, but I can't really tell from up here who we got playing right and left tackle that we're able to clear that path for Trey Griffin. Yeah, that's uh, the, too far away for me to be able to read who those <laughs> what those numbers were. But you know, it was a great call, and we talked about it last week. Even you, you give Trey the ball. It's taking three or four guys to try to bring him down. He's not big, but he is just a tough runner, and gets all those extra yards. Mersley off for the extra point, makes it a two-point game. An immediate timeout, 3.37 left hey. to play. 25-23, Liberty back within Media. two. Omaha will have Media timeout. we come back. It's Liberty football here on KINA. Orthopedic and Sports Medicine is your home team for better. Call physician and choose Sports Medicine physician Dr. Matthew Pyle, along with orthopedic surgeon Dr. Travis Wright and Todd Wiley. Call from 18 certified athletic trainers and physical therapists. We are ready when you need us to help prevent injury, enhance performance, and to tailor for surgery and rehabilitation. For area athletes to weekend warriors, the home field will find its strongest at Salina Regional Orthopedic and Sports Medicine. The Liberty plays the Oilers. Back here at Tony's Pizza Event Center, 25-23. Omaha leading it by two. And a really good football game here. The biggest lead of this game was by Omaha previous to that Salina touchdown. They led 25 to 16 as they scored three out of four times, dating back to the end of the first quarter. But Brian, that was kind of a statement drive there by the Liberty. The red, white, and blue went down the field. Wasn't a lot of passing. It was a lot of running, and it was a lot of smash mouth football. Yeah, I was nervous to say, was that going to be a must-score drive? Right, I was going to jinx it. But, uh, you know, I, I, we're in that situation, I think, with both these teams. The team that gets the next stop, I think, will come out as the winner. Okay. Michael Persley has his hand in the air. He is going to have a line drive kick that goes to Jones, three yards deep in the end zone. Deshaun Jones will bring it to the 15, and he is slung down and stopped right there. Isaiah Scott looks like he was in on the stop for the Liberty offense. And I think this is the worst starting field position. We have seen Omaha start about the 17, 18 yard line in the first half, so starting at their own 16 here, the best starting position that Salina has had for them. Yeah, they, Omaha's had a lot of midfield starts to their drives in this game today. Correct. They're gonna start here at the 16. 25-23, Omaha has a two point advantage. They will dispatch four wide receivers, two by two on each side. The slot men will be in motion for Andrew Jackson. He sends the receivers on first down and 10. Here comes the snap, under pressure. He's backpedaling, unloads it, gets three yards over the middle to Alex Noble. Football now at the 19-yard line. Yeah, Alex Noble getting a lot of action tonight, really probably catching the majority of the passes from Andrew Jackson. One guy that's been quiet we haven't really heard a lot about is Rashad Pargo. 
Fargo goes to the left. Now that you say that, I don't even remember him playing other than that pass that he dropped early on in this game. There's Jackson going to the right. This one to Du Bois. He will flirt with a first down, but be about a yard, maybe a half a yard short. That'll bring up third down. And Omaha looking to go quick here. They've tried to speed this game up a little bit on the Liberty defense. Well, when they haven't sped it up, they've had to take timeouts because the play clock's yeah. expired. Good point. Omaha now will put three receivers on the left-hand side. Du Bois a single to the right. Jackson sends him in motion. He wants to roll out to the right-hand side, puts it over the middle of the field, throws behind his receiver, but a really good catch by Tyler Jones. Jones has impressed me in this game. He looks like the best receiver on the field for Omaha in this contest. Two touchdowns and just made a spectacular catch there at the 11 to convert that first down. Yeah, and really smothered right there. Good coverage, just a great catch and a great job by Andrew Jackson getting the ball to him. 90 seconds left to go. Jackson now will walk all the way out to the left to his receivers. Now coming back. Still plenty of time on the play clock, 10 seconds. They'll send him in motion on the left-hand side. Jackson wants to pass over the middle. And again, a catch under pressure and under defensive disruptment was made there by Omaha's Alex Noble. And Tron Folsom right there just laying an absolute hit, gets up to see another completed pass deep in the secondary. And give it to Andrew Jackson. He does a great job of standing there and holding the ball as long as he can here. And we got a little confusion of guys running in and running off the field here for Omaha. 12 seconds on the play clock, 25-23, Omaha leads. Looks like they might get this one off here. Down to one second. They're gonna hand it off to Deshaun Jones and he will be taken down with no gain. Shaq Barrett in on the tackle. The former K-Dub Kayo. That'll bring up third down and two yards after losing a yard on that play, and that might be the end of the third quarter as it looks like Marvin Jones is directing his guys away from the play, but now they're going to break huddle. Five seconds left to play. They're not going to get it off. That's the end of the quarter. 25-23 at the end of three. Back of the fourth and final quarter action after this. You're listening to Salina Liberty Football, and it's brought to you by Salina Medical quarter. Aesthetics. Construction does metal roofs. So Construction offers residential, commercial, and attic metal roofing. So offers designer rib steel, standing seam, screw down panels, or stone coated steel. So Construction has financing available with low monthly payments. When it's time for a new metal roof, remember So Construction. We'll travel to you and provide free estimates. 2007. Google us. So Roofing. <laughs> Crowd here at Tony's Pizza Event Center making some noise. It's a third down and two. Omaha can still get a first down inside of the one yard line. Andrew Jackson will pull up his pants and look at an eye formation behind him. And movement up front for Salina. Now Salina pointing, the pointing game starts. I'm gonna point at you, you're gonna point at me. The officials are gonna say one of us is offsides. guilty and it's offside. Salina. Number 15, yeah, defense. Have, have the distance, right? to go yeah, in the previous spot. Things, at least from this angle, Third it down. looked like the quarterback went in, kind of made some head movement. I'm not sure if that's enough to draw the team offside, you know, to get the flag. But uh, 
you know, unfortunately for Salina, they made contact. It's half the distance. Basically amounts to two yards on the third and three. Now it'll be third and one, and again, they're at the two yard line. So can still get a first down here inside the one. Jackson has an eye formation again. He's gonna try to quarterback sneak it, and he is gonna be blasted into the end zone from behind by what was the basically glorified fullback in that formation and a touchdown for the Omaha Beef with 4.53 left to go here in the game. And kind of a- Excuse me, 14.53. And a big extra point here as you, you're sitting at an eight point game right now. So if you can keep them out of the end zone here, and it looks like they were gonna go for two, but then coach calls out and brings Jeremy Reynolds on to go for one. And I don't know what's better, having to go against Shaq Bradford around the edge or try to go for two. Yeah, if they did go for two here, I think it'd be a terrible strategy idea, unless you're trying to avoid Shaq Bradford. And they're gonna oh, yeah. get it to the holder who takes it into the end zone, and that's a flag. Yeah, that would be a start. penalty. 22 offense, five yard penalty. Yeah, you can't do you that. Try. happened really fast and I'm, I'm not quite sure there was there was a lot going on right there is now it looks like the kicker is going off the field and you they are going to go for two here for about what a six seven yard try here for an extra point well clearly with that play and with what they're doing now they're trying to avoid Shaq Bradford because he's made their extra points at attempts pretty much not matter and still a lot of confusion. Guys running in and out of the bench, getting into the huddle, down to 10 seconds on the play clock now. Going to have to burn a timeout maybe on an extra point. Clock down to two. Jackson's going to snap it with one. Rolling out to his right-hand side. He's going to throw it back across the field, and it's going to be broken up by the Liberty defense. Kendrick Harper over here. K-Hop batted that one out of bounds, and he saves a point and two points now for the Salina Liberty. So this a one possession game now on the exchange there between Salina scoring and making this a two point game and Omaha scoring and unable to get the PAT. So right now, I mean really, how big is Michael personally in this game? Because he's winning the kicking battle and the point after touchdowns, he also has a field goal in this game. Yeah, and you know, Brian talked to coach Heron O'Neill after game one last week when we were up in Topeka and he wanted special teams to improve. And I think so far, the special teams probably has improved since last week. And, you know, see what the return game can do here is Jeremy Reynolds really on that last kick did everything you can ask for in a kicker, have it bounce once and go over the back wall and have him start at the five yard line. Absolute worst field position you, an offense can have to start with the ball. So we'll see if Salina can make any adjustments here on the return game, maybe with Trey Griffin and maybe Dwayne Autry getting his hands on the ball. That's the thing. I, I'd love to see Salina get Dwayne Autry all the way back. Give him an opportunity to see what he can do. The guy can be electric when he's got the ball in his hands. Why not uh, roll the dice? Dwayne almost in a volleyball front line type of deal is calling a play it looked like maybe for Junior Allen behind him. He was maybe holding up a couple of fingers on where he wanted Allen to line up. And this kick is gonna go over Dwayne's head and land with Junior Allen, but go over the wall right before it gets to his Free clubs. kick kicked out of bounds. Ball so placed the five yard line. Out of bounds down. after bouncing on the turf will be spotted where it went over the wall and Salina Liberty will have the football, it looks like at the five yard line. Yeah, it went out, it went over the wall about the two, three yard line and in the indoor game, you know, you can't start with the ball inside the five, but you know, you talk about Michael Persley being ahead on this game, but I mean, on kickoff, Jeremy Reynolds has done everything you can ask him to do is back to back drives. Now Salina has to start at their own five yard line. 13.53 left to go. Still a lot of football tonight from Tony's Pizza Event Center here in Salina. 31-23, Omaha leading it by a full possession. Eight points. Tyree Adams, three receivers to the left-hand side. Has a single to his right. Adams looking. That over-the-top delivery this time goes to the left, and it will be 10 yards and a first down for the Liberty out to the 15-yard line 
That'll give Salinas some breathing room here as they work their way out of their own end zone once again. Remember their last drive, they went the full 45 yards for a touchdown. Yeah, and a great route there by you know Ed Smith and Isaiah Scott kind of trying to burn them deep down the middle and all three defensive backs went with them and just able to chunk one up, you know, four or five yards and able to get up to the positive yardage for a first down. First down and 10. Adams back to throw again. He's gonna come out of the pocket, gets rid of a couple of defenders, lunges ahead and gets to the nine yard gain mark. That's at the 24 yard line. Looked like Tyree was trying to jump up and continue to run, but he was touched down at the 24 yard line just underneath the Salina Regional Health Center banner and our friends from SRHC. Yeah, and an awkward landing right there. Good to see him kind of pop back up and take that one off running. So a good drive so far here, once again, starting inside, you know, they're at their own five yard line. Second down and one. You talked about playbook being wide open earlier. This is where you can really go anywhere. Adams back to throw. Wants to unleash one, left-hand side, and it's incomplete. I wonder, Devin, on that, yeah, he, I can't tell who was over there. It looks like Ed Smith, but just a great route and a, you know, a ball that this might be some of the hardest I've seen Tyree Adams throw the ball. We saw it on the two-point conversion to Isaiah Scott where it just come on a frozen rope, but the middle of the field, the offensive line is kind of opening the pocket up and allowing Tyree to step up. And with a yard to go, you wonder why he doesn't just take off running. Third down. And less than a yard. Adams now with Trey Griffin. He'll hand it off to Trey, and he will be knocked down and brought down for about a yard loss. And then some extracurricular activity between one of the D linemen and one of the offensive linemen for Salina. They shake hands. That's good to see on, an, on a day like today after the way this game is Actually, day is gone. Yeah, it, it didn't start out very well for handshakes and high fives earlier about 6 o'clock. Fourth down and two now for the Liberty. They're in midfield. They got to get to the 25-yard line to keep this drive going. Adams back to throw in traffic. Needs somewhere to go with it. He finds a receiver at the last minute, and it's going to be a gain of five. Excuse me, a gain of seven. Junior Allen with that reception takes it to the 20. Ron Allen with a seven yard reception. He had a great job there by, by Tyree, kind of just flooded the pocket. He wanted to step up, kind of closed on him, had to go out to his right, and Junior Allen just able to get enough separation for the first down. From the 20, Kelvin McCoy will snap it back to Tyree Adams, three receivers on the left-hand side. Adams lets one rip to the left. It's Junior Allen again. He gets first down yardage, then brought down at the seven. Actually, excuse me, that's Trey Griffin. Trey Griffin. Nope, Junior Allen again. Man, I can't read these numbers. Yeah, they're hard to go. The, the number I can see is, is Tyree Adams just kind of slow to get up there holding his left hand as he's still going back into the huddle trying to get feeling back into it. I didn't see the hit there. I just going up the field with the play and hopefully Tyree can shake this off and finish this game. As long as it's his left hand. Yes, left hand's okay. All the gold is on the right arm. 9.40 left to go. 31-23 Omaha trying to protect their eight-point lead. Tyree Adams empty backfield. Goes to Trey Griffin who's coming underneath. He will have a car wreck at the five and end up on a two and a half yard gain. Boy, this is a physical, physical war in the trenches, Brian, between these two teams. But I think everybody is a little surprised at how clean this game has been without any extracurricular stuff. Yeah, considering how things started and the emotions both teams were playing with, it really has been pretty clean. You, you know, each team has had the occasional illegal defense, um, kind of like the outdoor phantom holding, but it, it's been a fun entertaining game and a lot of guys have mentioned how quick the game is going. Yeah, absolutely. Second down and five, here's a fake pitch out to Griffith into the end zone, Isaiah Scott dropped another one. That's the second touchdown Isaiah Scott has dropped in this game. And here's the ball, the thing. yes, was behind him, Brian, but go ahead. Well, it, it was, but had Isaiah just stopped, Ed Smith, that was coming straight towards Ed. Ed was wide open in the back of the end zone 
and that would have been six points. I mean, so Brian, may not even have been intended for Isaiah Scott. I mean, regardless of who it was intended for, both of them were wide open. So somebody's, he had two hands on the football. You got to catch it. Third down and goal from the five. Liberty looking for eight points and a chance to tie this game. 8-12 left to play. Tyree Adams under pressure to the left. Throws a touchdown. It's a dart and bringing it in. Ed Smith. Past Ed. Ed was able to get position in front of Trey Dudley Giles. Was able to go up. One of the first times I've actually seen as we've gone down here, Salina has been able to grab I'm going to say that, that offensive position, get in front of the defensive backs coming across. So a great play, great execution by Salina. Now they'll go for two. That might have been Tyree Adams' best throw of the night. I agree with you. Just an absolute dart right to Ed Smith and just secure hands coming down on his backside. Just a great job and a great drive starting at their own five. Going for two, Adams has it backpedaling to the right. He has a receiver and it is incomplete. So we remain at a two point game with 719 left to go. The two point conversion is no good. Media, and a media timeout media is timeout. here. 719 left to go in this one. Omaha 31, Salina 29 here on KINA. Devin Russ, Brian, back here at Tony's Pizza Event Center, 719 left to go, 31-29, Omaha leading by two. Salina just got a touchdown, and they are ready to kick it away. Back deep for the beef, Deshaun Jones. Michael Persley handling the kicking duties tonight for the Liberty. Persley with his hand in the air, ball shaded to the right. On the goal line, he will kick off from in a high bounce that will put Jones three yards deep back in the end zone. Now he's looking for some space, has his jersey grabbed, and he will not make it to the 15-yard line. Arrested and dropped at the 13. And a good play defensively there by Tron Folson and Dwayne Autry. So here comes the Omaha offense. And Russ, it's been a little bit weird game here. We have had no quarterback sacks and no turnovers. Yeah, and if you and I kind of touched on it on that break right there is, I mean, maybe the next turnover wins the game regardless of who it is. Yeah, Omaha's got a two-point lead right now. But Salina has to come up with something here. That they're getting to Andrew Jackson, but about a half second late. The defensive backs have to get enough coverage to allow those front three guys to get to Andrew Jackson. And this is the Liberty secondary that had four interceptions last week. Jackson sends his guys in motion, a little hook route by Du Bois, and he is going to be taken down immediately on a big hit by Dwayne Autry. 6.39 left to go. It's a gain of four and brings up second down and six. And Omaha with a lead here going no huddle and going quick. I think what you touched on, though, is true. If they don't do this, they get delay of games. 
Here's Jackson, takes a big hit as he throws it. That's an almost pick. It is a pick. Up in the air, a ball that is knocked down, and then it runs right into the bread basket. The ruling of Henry Carpenter, the former Jayhawk, went up, rose Touchdown. up, made the play, and knocked it down, and it came with him to the ground. Brian, you had a great look at that pick. Yeah, Kendrick was able to go get position, went up. Both Kendrick Carper and the, and the uh, intended receiver both went up for the ball. Kendrick was just able to get a good bounce. It came in, and as he was on his back. The ball just kind the of fell right into him. The previous play is under review. Marvin Challenged Jones by doesn't Omaha. Like it. He's going to go ahead and ask for the review. Good luck. Here's the thing. In Salina, I don't know if I've ever seen anything overturned just because of the camera angles. Yeah. And Devin, let's talk about Kendrick Harper for, for a second. He came back for one reason, unfinished business. Yep. He, he looked at his niece and nephew. He told us this before the game last week. My niece and nephew looked at me and said, you can't be done yet. <laughs> and that was enough. He came back for one more year for one purpose. And that one turnover that Salina needed might have just been captured by K-Hop. Talk about pressure, man. It's a... Uh... Being a, being a guy, you know, for the little ones, and they want to see who play. It's hard to hang up, but the former Kansas Jayhawk, who is really, he, he established himself with Wichita. He was with the Wichita Wild. He's with the Wichita Force, has the rings, has the championships. He doesn't need a championship. He's already got that status. He just wants one to go out on and, and to ride off the, in the sunset. And he also believes in this Liberty team. He's here because of Heron O'Neill and what he thinks this Salina team is capable of. And I remember Brian and I interviewed him. We had him on at our halftime feature for the championship game last year. And he sat here in the booth off the air and he told us, win or lose, I'm done. Then he's bouncing around. He's in Bismarck helping them out a little bit in the <laughs> IFL. He's, he's in, we're seeing, I'm like, oh man, K-Hop ain't done. And here he is back again for one more season, we're told. But this is a big, big play here. We had just got done saying there have been no quarterback sacks. There have been no interceptions. Andrew Jackson got blasted on that play. He threw that ball up for grabs. It was down the right-hand sideline. He avoided the sack, but he might have thrown the interception as we are under review. And, and Coach Marvin Jones challenged the play. He walked off the field, the defensive coordinator, the defense is on the field for Omaha, the offense is on the field for Salina. So I think they know how this is going to end up, Brian. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to try to try to bring up. It's, you know, why go ahead and do this? You don't have confidence enough that you're going to overturn this call. So you throw your defense out and help me out here. A failed review, that cost you time out, right? Should, yes. And so, they, that so, means they only have one remaining. Yeah, you're going to go into what could be it. Now, if Salina's got to watch, you know, take care of things, get a good drive together, don't take those extra chances, try to get some points on the board. Now you're going to get an opportunity, but you only have one timeout left. This, this has been fun. It's yeah. hard to believe that this is only the second game of the season. Everything else is, man, it's going to be fun. And we've talked about it, Devin, the, the fireworks that we had before the game as we got the white hat coming back back out right now. And, and uh, we'll try to see if we can get the call from him. The ruling of the field is confirmed. It's an interception. It's a confirmed First interception. Down. So it was clear evidence that came Omaha will be charged football, with their second timeout. Like time I was out. mentioning before, it, you know, the fireworks we had there about 5 o'clock tonight before everybody got into the arena. and. Really, as good a game as this has been, I don't think we can ask for anything better. Well, if you're playing in March, you're going to have a Jayhawk on your team, right? Kendrick, Kendrick Harper comes up with a big interception there, and he turns the tables here where the Salina Liberty, now trailing by two, can go down the field and get a go-ahead score. Still a lot of time left here, 6-18 left to go on this one. Tyree Adams empties the backfield. Four wide receivers. The slot men will be in motion underneath fake handoff. He wants to go over the middle, wants it all, and it's going to be dropped off the chest plate of Junior Allen, it looked like, and then a big hit laid there by Omaha Beef's Kelvin Jenkins. Yeah, and if you're going back to the huddle right there, you, Tyree, you can't, you can't let me leave my feet right in the middle of the field. It's always a wide receiver's worst nightmare to have to leave their feet in the middle of the field, but you got to come down with that catch knowing that contact is going to be there as you're wide open in the middle of the field. Second down and 10 now after the incomplete pass. Liberty focusing on getting a first down and keeping this drive alive here with a couple of downs in front of them. Three receivers on the right-hand side. Adams back on a three-step drop and another dropped pass. 
Boy, these Liberty receivers are doing no favors for their offense here in this game as Fast Ed Smith just drops one that would have been a first down. Yeah, he had probably seven, eight yards. He, he would have had time to get up after he was catching that one on his seat to get up and run for a first down. So a big third down and 10 here is we're just going to tick under five minutes to go. Walk down to five. Trey Griffin stands in the backfield, left hip of Tyree Adams. Two receivers in motion on the right. Adams again, three-step drop out of the shotgun, dumps it off for Griffin out on the left-hand side. Big block and a flag. Griffin will have more than enough for the first down, but coming back and trying to get a block in that play brought in the flag, Brian, for the Liberty. Yeah, it looks like potential block in the back against Ed Smith. I don't know if they're gonna call a block in the back. Maybe you see a blindside block called now. Uh, he looked like he had his head in the front on that Personal play. Personal foul, blindside block. Blindside block Number three, exactly defense. Has to go up the spot of the foul. Repeat, third down. So they're gonna repeat. Do they repeat third down? Yes. It should be from the spot of the foul. So it's it about the 25, and it's a 15-yard penalty, so that'll take them all the way back here to the 13. And now it's third down and about 14 yards, 15 the, yards. And the refs go over and talk to the Omaha coach to make sure it's in the right position here. From the 13. Third down and a mile here for Salina. Empty the backfield once again. Three wide receivers on the right-hand side. A little low snap there for Tyree. He's going to come out with it, though. Breaks a tackle. Now still running. First down and more. 20-15 down to the 13-yard line. Houdini does it again. He should have been ankle tackled at the 20-yard line. Somehow steps through that tackle and was able to negotiate the lanes and traffic and take it inside the 15 to the 14-yard line. Timeout injury. Is this line first down? And we have an Omaha player down on the field. It's Kelvin Jenkins. And just a great job there by... Tyree Adams, and I've mentioned it how many times in this broadcast that step up, the ball, it, it, the pocket just widens wide open, just run up the middle. That time it actually closed on him, and he had to make three or four plays yeah. with his legs to get the first down. Yeah, that was not a wide open field run by Tyree Adams. He was negotiating traffic, picking the lanes, doing the right thing with his blocker set up, and kudos to the Liberty blocking downfield. It was clean and it was effective. Now first down for the Liberty. They are at, their, at the Omaha 14 yard line. Four minutes left to go. Here's the handoff. Trey Griffin, counter play, 10, five, touchdown, Liberty. 3.54 left to go. And Trey Griffin punches it in from 15 yards away. And that one chalked up. Brian, I'm gonna send it down to you, but that offensive line just created a hole for Trey Griffin to get right to the end zone. They made tremendous hole for him to get through, give credit. The cuts that he put on those defensive backs, that was amazing in itself. You look at what's going on here. A lot of the players on both sides, hands on the knees, they've put a lot of effort into this game so far. Kind of stuck in no man's land here. Whether you go for one or two, they're gonna go for one. Send Michael Persley on, the field goal is up and it is good. 36-31, Persley gets the field goal, and we have a media timeout. 3.34 left to go. We're going to step away. We'll just take a 60 here as the Liberty have a five-point lead on KINA.
Back here at an electric Tony's Pizza event center. You look at this place a lot, Russ. We talk about atmosphere, right? And you look at this place and you're like, oh man, that crowd, it's horrible. But this place is big. I mean, it'll put in 6,000, 7,000 people with the football setup. And man, it got loud during that timeout. The Liberty players were kind of egging on their crowd and this crowd jumped into it. And it is a loud, loud arena right now as the cheers rain down upon this 50 yard field where Salina has just taken a five point lead with 334 left to go in the game. Michael Persley has it teed up. This time he shades it just to the left. And the football squibs over to the left hand side, bounces off the wall at the 18 yard line. The rule of the field is a free kick, hit the there, wall. That is where in place Jackson, one out. Beef First down. Will come out. And we talked about, you know, maybe the next turnover wins this game. Well, there's still a lot of football left with 3.30 to go in this indoor game and got just enough time where that Salina Liberty defense was able to get a hit on Andrew Jackson, just enough to throw off the throw for Kendrick Harper to get over there and make that interception. So look for this defensive line. We saw Keenan Gibbs jumping up and down almost on the water cooler in the, in the end zone over here is fired up at nose tackle right now. He is out there over the football. Omaha, first down and 10, 315 left to go. Andrew Jackson has two receivers offsides. A flag will fly. He will air it out to the end zone as he takes a big hit, and it will be incomplete over the wall. So we, now we have to unsort the flag. I think the receivers for Omaha were offsides. It's either it's either that or I can't tell. It looked like Travis Taylor offside. maybe was offside. In the neutral zone of the snap, over on the far number side. eight, defense. That's exactly what it was. Five yard penalty. I mean, I, First down. I really think that should have been offsetting. I think if you're watching on the video at home or wherever you may be watching it, the receivers for Omaha on the right-hand side were way off. I know there's a grace period in there and there's a couple of yards of forgiveness, but we saw this a lot in the championship game last year. That's, that's why I bring it up. And if you're a defensive lineman down and you see a receiver cross, cross your peripherals, your, your thing is to go. Yeah. So here it is again. This time Omaha's 12,000 yards offside. Right? They've got to call out. 50. Yeah. That offense. one wasn't a choice. Five yard penalty. And you can go through an entire season. We think years back, it's maybe a call you see two, three times tops all season long. But it was a glaring, glaring thing that was ignored in Champions Bowl last year. The Omaha receivers being offsides, even on the go ahead touchdown. They were off sides, and it was not called. Yeah, and the grace period was five or six yards on that play. Yeah, when you have a guy making a break in the middle of the field, he's five yards off sides, the balls have been snapped yet. That is uh, not good. And an interception! Dwayne Autry takes it away! Andrew Jackson rolling out to his right-hand side, and he was picked and owned by Dwayne Autry. Can we say Andrew Jackson just got ball hot? Do it. Do it. Already Dwayne said it. Dwayne Autry jumped right in there. Great coverage. Autry laid out and had that thing stick right in those yellow safety color gloves, and he was able to take it away. And now Salina will own the football up by five. Omaha has one timeout and the 60-second warning remaining with 2.34 left to go. We talked about turnovers. No turnovers in this game. K-Hop, D'Autry get two picks, and they shut down this Omaha offense. Yeah, that defensive line did a great job flushing Andrew Jackson out of the pocket, not to take anything away from Dwayne Autry right there, covering the middle of the field and laying his body out to bring that ball in. Just an excellent job by that whole Salina Liberty defense. Two receivers in motion. Adam still wants to throw, comes over to the right-hand side. Trey Griffith has it at the 24-yard line. That will be a gain of about six and bring up second down and four. Yeah, really close right there to a late hit as we saw him kind of get up against the boards quick and then a late Omaha beef defender. So maybe we might see a little chippiness here going into this with a minute 50 left to go. Yeah, here, here's the thing too. Salina technically, they don't have to snap that ball till if my math gets me to about a minute 30. Yep. 12 seconds left on the play clock. Tyree Adams watching. The big LED red colored play clock in front of him behind the Liberty bench. He has taken it now down to three. Receivers in motion, they snap it with two. Delay handoff, Trey Griffin. He is working his way through the traffic and he has a first down and that is huge. 
Salina now with a first down at the Omaha 20 yard line. And now they can take this all the way down to the 60 second warning and go through with 60 seconds left. And just one timeout remaining for Omaha. We'll step away. 36 31 is our score. Liberty lead it by five. 60 seconds left when we come back after this 60 second one minute timeout warning. on KI. One minute timing rules are now in effect. Salina has three timeouts, Omaha has one. Media, timeout. With eight minutes left in this game, Omaha had a 31-23 lead, and we made the comment that there had not been any quarterback sacks and any interceptions. Kendrick Harper got a pick on first down. Liberty went down, they scored, made it 31-29, or excuse me, 36-31. Then, Andrew Jackson rolling out to his right-hand side, trying to be mobile, threw the ball up for grabs in the middle of the field, and Dwayne Autry made a really, really good play to take that football away. And now the Liberty have it back once again with one minute left to go. 36-31 is our score. Omaha has one timeout. Tyree Adams, delay handoff. Trey Griffin, the former Blue Dragon from Hutch Community College, is going to earn his spot on this roster here in this game and also be elevated because if you're just tuning in and just joining this game, MVP from 2021, Tracy Brooks, broke his wrist in the first quarter of this contest. And Omaha elects not to use a timeout. Oh, now they do call a timeout. Well, they let 20 seconds roll off time the out. before they called it. Omaha, third and final not of the half. Not a decision, I don't think. If you're going to take it, take it right away, right? Yeah, there, were, there was not a lot of good decisions made tonight. It sounds like on one side of the football pregame during the game. Scoreboard shows it 36-31 Salina. Yeah, we uh, had a little bit of a skirmish. Again, if you're just joining us, there was some interaction at midfield. Allegedly, Marvin Jones, the head coach for the Omaha Beef, headbutted Heron O'Neill, the head coach for the Salina Liberty. We cannot confirm or deny that. Allegedly, Heron O'Neill has a Band-Aid on his head. Her Marvin Jones does not. Little trivia for you. Hit me. That was the 50th career interception indoor for one Dwayne Autry. You do your research and I love it. Well, he told me. Of course he did. <laughs> of course he did. Always the self-promoter. 36-31, a five-point lead for the Liberty. Delay handoff, Trey Griffin. He goes down at the line of scrimmage. A lot of guys flying through, trying to blow him up. The clock is stopped the clock because is the line did not have positive no yards. Please the reset the game the clock to 31 yeah. seconds. I don't think they gained any yards on that The clock will start play, so on the snap. I think the clock stops yep. on that. You are correct. Why not take a shot in the end zone here? Ah, uh, third down. Am I being greedy? Yes. Okay. All you got to do is just get one yard positive, and then it'll be your ball game. Get 17. Tyree Adams is going to come up under the line of scrimmage. Now, excuse me, under the center, Kelvin McCoy. He gets two yards to the 15, and that'll do it. That is the game. Tyree Adams put this one on ice, but it was the Liberty defense who rose up. We talk about the interceptions, the plays made on the back end from K Hop and also Dwayne Autry. But don't forget about the pressure, the pressure to make Andrew Jackson take these bad throws and put them into a spot where they could be intercepted. But really, when you look at both those throws, Russ, they weren't bad throws. They were plays made by this Liberty defensive secondary. Yeah, they did an excellent job there late, and they rose up in the second half. 
you know, to do exactly what Coach Ron O'Neill needed him to do.